Charles Philippe Ronson, the 1st of December 1751 to the 24th of March 1794, was a French general of the Revolutionary Army of the First French Republic, commanding the large Parisian division of l'armée révolutionnaire. He was an extreme radical leader of the French Revolution and one of the many followers of Jacques René Ebert, known as the Ebertists. Topic: Life Born in 1751 in Soissons, Aisne, a city northeast of Paris, Ronson was son of a master cooper or barrel maker. At the age of 17, Charles Philippe Ronson joined the Parisian army. By 1772 he left the army with the position of corporal and soon became a playwright and a tutor. In these years he met the artist Jacques Louis David and they became good friends. Welcoming the Revolution, Ronson became the bourgeois guard captain in the district of St. Roch in 1789. He presented several patriotic pieces in some of the theatres in the capital between the years 1790 and 1792. It was in this period that Ronson became a club orator and joined the Club of the Cordeliers. Influences <inaudible> 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 In August and September 1792, the Executive Council entrusted him three missions. In November, the Minister of War, Patch, named him Commissioner-Organizer in Belgium to the Army of Dumouriez. In this post, Ronson denounced the acts of violence of the suppliers to the armed forces, who were protected by the general. Ronson was named Assistant of the Minister of War of Bouchot on 23 April 1793, without ever commanding a squadron. It is possible that Ronson received that position thanks to his friendship with Chamet and Ebert. In May, he left to Vendée, to help the provisioning armies. There was an incident in which Ronson was upset that his plan for defeating the Vendines was rejected, therefore, he decided to make sure that General Canclo was defeated by the Vendines, ensuring his own victory. He led his troops to Vigiers and Beaulieu and was eventually trapped at Corinth. Because of Ronson's decision the Vendines took over Beaulieu and managed to convince the committee to get rid of Canclo. Ronson's support among the Cordeliers and the ministry allowed him to cross the rank of captain to that of brigadier general in the army of the coasts of Rochelle. In September, 1793, he becomes chief general of the Revolutionary Army of Paris. Ronson had a violent character and was very outspoken. He, however, proved to be a good leader. Ronson was witty and clever when dealing with his different functions. However, thanks to his quick ascent and his character Ronson acquired numerous enemies, particularly Pierre Philippot and Fabre d'Eglantine. Ronson created a bill that was posted in Paris after his return from Lyon that stated that there were 140,000 people living in Lyon, 1,500 of which had nothing to do with the rebellions. Ronson stated that before the end of September, all of the people who were guilty would die. On 27 September Fabre d'Eglantine denounced Ronson for being an ultra-revolutionist. Ronson was arrested along with François-Nicolas Vincent, who was another member of the Cordeliers Club. His last days While in prison the Cordeliers wrote a petition in favor of both Vincent and Ronson, stating that they were great patriots and that Ronson should not be punished for attacking Dumouriez, Custine, and Brousseau. Among those who were defending Ronson was Collet d'Urbois, who was also part of the committee. Collet d'Urbois defended Ronson, saying that while fighting in the South along with all of the other patriots of the Revolution, Ronson showed great determination in enforcing respect for the Republic. With the help of Fauquier Tinville, Ronson was believed to be working on a military conspiracy to replace the revolutionary government with a military dictatorship. Fauquier Tinville called him one of the New Cromwell. Ronson was finally arrested along with Ebert, Mamoro, and Vincent. While in prison Ronson is quoted with saying these words to his co-accused. You will be condemned. When you should have acted, you talked. Know how to die. For my part, I swear that you shall not see me flinch. Strive to do the same. Some of his final words before his death were, Liberty undone. Because a few paltry fellows are about to perish. Liberty is immortal. Our enemies will fall in their turn, and liberty will survive them all. 
On 24 March 1794, five carts full of condemned Ebertists were taken to the guillotine, Charles Philippe Ronson among them. Ronson stayed true to his words in prison, as Thomas Carlyle relates the event, he alone among the Ebertists went to the scaffold with an air of defiance, still maintaining a steely eye of command. Within a week of his death, Ronson's army de Paris was disbanded. 